Hello, my name is Alexandra Rodriguez de Ruiz. I'm the program coordinator for Centro Cultural Jauria Trans here in Mexico City. And I want to thank um, GATE and IRGT for this opportunity to start the dialogue about the situation of my sisters, the trans sex workers here in Mexico City. Before I get started, I want to disclaim that this presentation is to give visibility to the situation of this woman and how the COVID-19 pandemic is affecting them and the great inequality that exists here in Mexico City when it comes to trans communities, including trans sex workers and trans migrants. I'm not a spokesperson for them and neither I'm trying to be a voice for them. As I seen at first hand their situation, it is important for me to bring these issues as I am part of these communities as well. Trans sex workers have always been a part of our city. Um, they have always uh, taken to the streets and work as a way of survival and also as a way to take space and to express their gender and sexuality. Since I remember the first trans woman I ever met when I was able to comprehend what a trans woman was, she was a sex worker and she had to resource to this type of work to this type of industry due to the lack of opportunities in our society for trans identified individuals, specifically trans women, whom in my opinion are the most visible and vulnerable of the LGBTQI communities. Back in the day, trans women in Mexico City, we were not only oppressed and discriminated against, but we were also persecuted by the system. It was the police who persecuted us and detained us. Either you're a sex worker or not. Just because you were walking down the street, you'll be stopped and detained and violated or your human rights by the police. Usually they will take your money, jewelry, whatever uh, that you had on that was worth to them they will check it, including um, sometimes sexual favors. In my case, they even take me to my house and ask my family for money to let me go. Back in those days, I was a teenager and I was terrorized by the police just for being trans. So I cannot imagine how it was for the trans woman that worked the streets Back in those days, I remember most of the trans women, they recurred to sex work for survival. I know that if you were a trans woman who could not afford to pay the police to let you go, they would take them to jail. They uh, locked them up for 15 days and shaved their heads in some cases to humiliate them, to make them feel less than a human being. They were violated of their human rights. They're also forced, these women, to have their pictures taken for some very horrible tabloids that existed in our city back in those days. The headlines will be a bunch of deviants, bunch of perverts, bunch of uh, men dressed as women, perverting uh, people and lying to men, and so many horrible things um, that I remember. Trans women were portrayed as sexual deviants who were uh, looking for victims on, um, on the streets totally dehumanizing this woman. And that was one of the reasons why I had to uh, migrate to the U.S. because I was escaping this persecution at a very young age. I was 16 when I had to leave my family, my city, my school, my friends to escape this type of a persecution. The persecution and criminalization of transsex worker, workers it is a, a global issue. In many countries, my trans sisters are still suffering violence and oppression. 
uh, by the system. In many places, like in Peru, where this recent image was taken two weeks ago during this pandemic, trans women are still going out on the streets to survive, to, to make a living, and they are being persecuted and violated in places like Peru, Honduras, and other countries in Central America. They suffer extreme violence, including death at the hands of the system. Of course, in many of these uh, cases, the stereotypes and the stigma that are associated with trans identities doesn't help at all. I am compelled to talk about this because it is so much stigma still that it hurts to see how in a cis heteropatriarchal society, we trans women are classified under these stereotypes when in reality we are more than these. And these are the causes why today we are seen as communities that are uh, disposable, that are uh, less than human. And right now with this pandemic, with the COVID-19 pandemic, it's even worse. This sign as seen on the streets of Mexico City where they asking us to stay home. As we know, the, the stay home is not for everyone. As here, 80% of the population are at a poverty level, including most of my trans sisters. Here, the government took an initiative to close down all the hotels and houses where trans and cis sex workers, including trans migrants, lived and, and they were living there and work out of these places. They were thrown out on the streets. The, the city closed down all these hotels, leaving um, hundreds of women and, tra and trans women and cis women and trans migrants out of a place to live. And without housing and with no place to be able to work, to, to do their work. This is a horrible situation for many of my sisters. I've been to these uh, areas and I've seen at first hand what has happened. I want to make sure also that this problem is not only here in Mexico City. Um, this great social inequality uh, is happening all over in Latin America, in the U.S., and in, pla and in places like Russia, where a trans sex work worker set herself on fire. She did this to give visibility and to show how desperate trans sex workers in their area are. Um, trans people, we are already marginalized and oppressed by society and by the restrictive legislation. And this pandemic has amplified these structural issues. Here in Mexico City, as I say, um, many, many trans women were left out of a place to live, were left out of shelter, were not able to practice and do their work, those who practice uh, sex work, those that have to resource to sex work. These measures taken by the Mexican government um, and their lack of response to immediate needs of these women had uh, forced many of the NGOs to unite and bring help to this woman, like Kait. Uh, which is Centro de Atención a las Identidades Trans, will translate into Center of uh, Attention to Trans Identities. I myself was there uh, helping out, bringing food and relief and uh, masks and gloves to these women that were out on the streets, thanks to the help of uh, people in the U.S. that were making donations for immediate relief to this woman here and to provide some help, which was very much needed. For me, it's really, really important to make sure that we understand that sex work is a work. 
Sex work is a job. Sex work is necessary for some people to survive and to make a living. Enough of stigmatizing and criminalizing and penalizing uh, sex work because for many, it's the only resource they have due to the lack of opportunities in the uh, workforce and in the education fields. This is a way of survival, not only for trans women, but also for trans men and for cis men and women as well. And unfortunately, there is uh, so much taboo around sex work that many people are still stigmatizing it and many governments criminalize it and penalize it, uh, putting at risk the people that, that have to resource to it. Some of these risks are social exclusion, discrimination, and exposure to violence. Here in Mexico City, is, is uh, not criminalized, is uh, not penalized necessarily, but in cases the police goes and persecute this woman and also the, the people that are looking for sex workers. Unfortunately, and, and many other places, it's still criminalized, it's still penalized. And my trans sisters are being uh, persecuted and violated and dehumanized because of being on the streets trying to survive. So I think that this gives us a, a clearly an idea of how we are still have so much work to do when it comes to trans sex work and the ability to make people conscious of this situation, which is happening globally and it has uh, augmented by the pandemic right now, uh, making this situation very precarious for uh, my trans sisters all over the world. If you would like more info or if you uh, would like to help out this situation for trans sex workers here in Mexico City, the information is on this next image for you to send help and relief directly to them. And I really thank you. I really thank Kate and IRGT for opening the space and, and making it possible for me to just come and, and, and give light and visibility to the situation of my trans sister, uh, trans sex workers in Mexico City. Thank you so much and have a great time during these times and enjoy AIDS 2020. Thank you.